structure works out over here. How everything has uh, everything has happened for a reason. Um, this damage that you see to the tree here is uh, something that's uh, something that's come from elephant. But the tree itself. This part over here. This part over here of the tree. This is um, um, what's called the cambium layer. Well, this is the outer outer layer of the cambium layer, the bark itself. Um, the central part of the tree over here, there's no real life in it. This is just um, the, the structure the, 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 that actually holds the tree up, the foundation of the tree itself, and keeps the tree, uh, allowing the tree to stand so it can grow. Um, now the life in the tree is inside this uh, cambium layer that I was showing you, and um, that's where all the nutrient flow happens. So what you get is you get elephants coming in here, and uh, they actually stick their tusk in, wedge their tusk in, and break it off, and um, strip off the bark and actually start eating that. Now, looking at it, you would say, yeah, this is very destructive, you know, because, I mean, now this, this whole layer is, um, uh, has been stripped off. There's no pathway, there's no uh, route for the nutrients to actually move up and down through the tree. So this tree is, in fact, going to die, although it's probably already dead. Um, uh, and you'll just end up with one of those typical skeletal trees that you see out in the bush. Great for photography, but the tree's dead. Um, and one could say this is very destructive. But the beauty in it is, it's one of the ecological roles of elephant. The elephant will come and you'll strip a tree like this. But now this part of the tree is exposed. And the fact that it's exposed now means that um, it's available for other animals to utilize, especially an insect called a wood boring beetle or a wood borer. Um, and they come and, um, and they'll bore inside the wood and uh, they, um, uh, in their larval stage, and they'll pupate inside the tree and become adults and eat their way out again. Now, the interesting thing with that is that uh, this has all been made available. If the elephants didn't come and strip that, the beetle wouldn't have a place to go and uh, bore into it, wouldn't have its first meal. And uh, in turn, a woodpecker will come along and start knocking around that little hole, and you'll find a meal inside there. And that woodpecker has a meal now, all because the elephant stripped the bark of the tree. This will happen over years and years and years, and eventually the structure will become weaker and weaker and weaker. And uh, as it gets weakened, a storm will come through, or strong winds, or an elephant might come and grab its backside against it the tree will end up falling over. As the tree falls over, and the winds come through in the winter months, the seeds blow through, and uh, the seeds will actually drop from grass, drop next to the tree, and you'll get a thick, dense blanket of grass growing over this tree, which is a home for other animals. Scrub hairs, reptiles, some mongoose species, birds, anything like that. So, all of a sudden, just because an elephant's pushed out, or an elephant came and stripped the bark of the tree, you have food for the wood boring beetles, you have uh, uh, food for the, uh, the woodpeckers, a home for small mammals and reptiles and birds and eventually the tree will just decompose and the nutrients will soak back into the soil and uh, you'll have a healthy piece of ground uh, rich in nutrients that uh, um, other plants can utilize to actually grow. So one could say it's a little bit of damage but it's all part of the ecological role of animals and you have a nice big balance in the ecosystem because of that. It's uh, just something that uh, I find fascinating. Over. Well, welcome to Marco's uh, Magic Mooty Market. As you can see over there, I was having a good uh, go with the elephant dung, just trying to get it all um, going nice and quickly. And I must say, the amount of smoke that I took in over there, I'm actually feeling particularly light-headed now. Um, you can see the dung here smolders very, very easily. There's a bit of a breeze, um, so it's actually just feeding the fuel, you could say, feeding the fire and it's uh, burning very very quickly. I'm going to go past that other one there now and just put it up with some water. But um, uh, traditionally this has been used to uh, cure headaches and I can see exactly why they say that because my head is feeling very very light at the moment. Um, so I'm going to stick some water on this and put this out. Oh, but while we're on the subject of uh, medicines and different uses of plants and uh, things out over here elephant dung which I was um, smoking over there and which we did a couple of uh, months ago with Alex as well which was quite entertaining watching him uh, smoke the elephant dung it's got a very very sweet smell to it probably a lot of you out there wondering what on earth am I doing 
Well, here we are at Wild Earth and we're smoking elephant dung and uh, just trying to see the effects of it. And it's, uh, it, does, uh, it does work, it does affect your, um, the way your head feels. Uh, feel a little bit uh, lightheaded, like I say. And um, it's, uh, it has been used for uh, relieving headaches. I'm not exactly sure why. I've had some people um, say that it could be to dilate the blood vessels. The blood can flow a lot uh, uh, easier through your, around your head. Um, and um, others saying that uh, because elephants have such a slow um, uh, metabolism that alcohol could actually, uh, the plant could ferment in their digestive system, could release small amounts of alcohol, not that uh, would affect an elephant, but maybe us. These are just theories, they're not fact, don't take my word on this, just what other people have uh, speculated. But here we are, and I've taken a couple of things out of the bush here. There's another big piece of elephant dung. Um, Right, okay, here we go, I've got three different plants here, those ones are all related to each other, we'll start, uh, oh well why not say start with this one, um, this plant over here that I've taken is a, um, one of the bush willows, and uh, the russet bush willow, if you take the leaves and you strip them off a branch, just like that, take a handful of leaves, probably three, four times more than what I've got now, boil them up with, uh, boil them up with water, uh, warm water, and drink it, um, uh, 20 minutes after you drink this uh, infusion, your stomach will work, um, so you'll clear out your system. So one could say that it's a, a herbal laxative, um, and it does work. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you can guess why it works, I won't have to explain that part. But uh, as a guide out here, we tend to try everything to make sure that we know what we're talking about, and uh, these medicines do work out here. Uh, this one comes from a kubu berry. Um, like a lot of the other plants we get out over here, Like a lot of uh, the plants we get out here, a very high level of tannin in this plant makes it very dry to taste. So if you nibble on a piece of it, you actually get um, a very a very dry mouth, it actually tastes revolting. Um, it, it dries your mouth out, all the liquid co coagulates in your mouth. And um, that can be used for numerous things. Um, the tannin has uh, anesthetic properties, you can stick it in your mouth where you've got a sensitive gum or a sore tooth and it will actually take the pain away in that area. You can rub it on a wound, it will dry the blood because of the tannins coagulating liquid. Um, or you can eat two or three of these leaves and um, it will actually help uh, work with diarrhea, cure diarrhea. So um, you can drink a lot of the other ones and then chow that afterwards and fine. Well, if you want to, I suppose, that's one way to do it. Uh, probably just better not to do anything. But if you want to clear your system out and then clog it up again, uh, russet bush willow and then the kubu berry. Um, as well, I suppose, while we're on that subject, uh, here's our bush toilet paper, uh, the weeping wattle. Just take this one over here, take a whole handful of them. There's one ply, there's two ply, and, well, since it's my last day, why not that three ply? Um, yeah, there we go, a nice handful of uh, bush toilet paper out over here that you can, uh, can use. And very, very careful, so you've got to be very careful using this because there's a plant that looks very similar to this called a uh, river climbing thorn. Um, it actually looks exactly the same as this plant here. Uh, the leaf structure is almost identical, but um, on the leaflets here, just at the, the base, uh, you actually get tiny, tiny little um, hooked thorns that recurve and go down, two on either of them. They're very difficult to see, but they are there. But uh, I suppose that's um, a mistake you'll only make once in your life, and it'll be a great way to learn the difference between trees. So yeah, there's the... Uh, the, have, the you, have you done that yourself, Mark? You said earlier you test everything. No, no, I, I, I do a lot of research before I test, so... No, not the river climbing thorn, no, but uh, we don't need to go into too much detail about the weeping wattle. Um, and then this last one over here, this is a really cool one. Um, this comes from a tree called the uh, Magic Worry. Um, Euclid divinorum is the uh, botanical name. Uh, the divinorum comes from the fact that this is one of your uh, water divining trees. So this is what uh, this plant was used for. But what it is used for traditionally as well is if I actually take a branch like this. Let's just get a little blade. actually see how fibrous the inside of the plant is and it actually when you beat it like that after you break the bark off it actually ends up with a, a little toothbrush or a little brush for painting your toothbrush for brushing your teeth cleaning your teeth out like that I personally prefer using just a normal toothbrush it makes life a lot easier and it's easier on the gums